Whoa! <laughs> Look at this right there. That's the perfect dive. That was absolutely cutting right there into the water. What a noise, what a rip. On the trail. <laughs> what a maneuver. Unbelievable. Huh? All right, folks, and here we go, the grand finale of the 2021 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. It's about to go down. Welcome, everyone, to Polignano Amare, where the houses literally rise from the rocks and where diving from cliffs is a tradition and a part of the culture here in the southwest part of the Italian boot. No better stage for the final stop of the season. Trace Worthington here alongside Red Bull cliff diving expert Joey Zuber. Thanks for joining us live on a beautiful day along the Adriatic shoreline. And Joey, Wow, I suspect the divers will be very excited to get after it on a day like this. Oh, it's a glorious day, but the previous competition was incredibly windy with rough swells. But what a contrast we have here today. Calm and flat seas. Now the athletes are warming up, of course, warming up their muscles, but uh, they also need to warm up their mind, visualizing the dives perfectly in their minds getting into competition mode. But as I said before, these conditions are picture perfect. And this is exactly what we want for the finale of the season. And after a 21-month break in the series, San Rafael France set the tone, Joey, very nicely. And setting the tone she did, Rihanna and Iflam with nine straight wins across three seasons. Incredible stuff. Molly Carlson, a new face of the scene, and kicking it off with a bang with a superb second-place finish. Castle and Preda with, Preda with an astonishing win, sending a message he's ready to duel the best right from the start. Stop two in Oslo, Norway. Did not count towards the World Series points. It turned into an exhibition because of various travel restrictions. But what a show it was for the Norwegian fans, Joey, able to witness a handful of the top divers. Look at that platform. What an incredible platform, 30 <laughs> meters long. <laughs> then it was off to a series classic in Mostar, Bosnia and Herzegovina off the old bridge for stop number three. And heavy rain didn't stop this fine performance by Adriana Jimenez, two years off the sport for a well-earned second place. Nikita Fedotov shaking up the leaderboard with his third place result. And then Konstantin Popovich showing his typical grit and determination to secure second. Down Patrick at Ireland, where the weather presented many challenges, but somehow it turned into a 10 fest with the judges, starting with Rhiannon Ifland's perfect dive, the first for any female. And how about her Australian counterpart, Xanthia Panisi, with her first ever podium taking third. Jessica McCauley having a stellar season in second place there. Then check this out, Carlos Imino, an arm stand dive, the very first time we've seen that directly from the cliff face. And then Alessandro De Rosa proving his style and execution is to be reckoned with, hitting the podium for third. Puglia, Italy, right here, hosted stop number five, the first of an Italian doubleheader this past Wednesday with some turbulent wind and water to make things very interesting. And Katzel and Preda back on the comeback trail, feeling more comfortable on the podium for third. And then Costa with yet another second place finish. Jessica McCauley narrowly missing the win by just two points for second. Molly Carlson then climbing her way back up the leaderboard for a third place finish. Yeah, but folks, it didn't affect the two most decorated cliff divers in the world, Rihanna Nifflin and Gary Hunt, who had enough points to each lock up another title and King Kaakili Trophy. So here we are at the grand finale in beautiful Pognano Amare, Italy, to cap off an exciting season. And we are about to get rolling with the women's fourth and final round. But let's get you up to speed on how things work with Red Bull cliff diving. Eight men and eight women were permanent divers in the 2021 season. Four wildcard divers were added to every stop for a total of 24 athletes. Uh, that's right. It's four rounds of diving, each of them being judged, and every dive counts. So it's only about three seconds to judge a diver's execution, which includes the takeoff from the dive point, the position in the air and form, and then trace, of course, the critical water entry. Yeah, and the scoring is straightforward. Five judges. They present the score card between 0 and 10. The low and high scores are scratched. The remaining three are multiplied by the DD. That's the degree of difficulty equaling the total score. So clearly, Joey, the more flips and twists by the diver, the higher the DD. That's right. They've got to push the limits. So at every World Series stop, four dives make up the final score, and points are awarded at each stop and then added together, which goes towards the World Series standings 
and then the divers can discard their lowest competition results. So in other words, they can just throw away their worst place right. finish this season. And then we're taking all of that into consideration, Joey, Rihanna and Iflin on the women's side and Gary Hunt for the men can add another King Kai Keeley trophy to their cases. All the other divers can wait till the year 2022 for a shot. So four rounds of diving today. Three have already been completed. So let's take a look back at the previous rounds, Joey. Which of the women are in contention for winning this final stop in Poignano Amare? Okay, we've got Molly Carlson loving the conditions here. First after round one and two, nine and a half from the judges. Exquisite stuff in fine form. That's exactly the start she needed. You've got to kick it off round one. That's the way that you want to do it. Beautiful. And then how about this woman from Italy in front of the home crowd, Alyssa Corsetti. Four nines from the judges. <laughs> what a way to kick off your career. 19 Beautiful years old. Stuff. Yeah. And Rhiannon sitting in second after round two, chasing Molly Carlson, who at this point is in the lead. But uh, now Molly Carlson's leading, or Rhiannon Ifland's leading after round three. Okay, and then Xanthia Panisi searching for her second ever podium, currently in third. Solid ace from the judges on that dive. Beautiful, yeah, we'll, beautiful action. Yeah, and we'll have to keep a close eye on the women's standings to see who also earns the final permanent diver spots for the next season. But one diver who has already earned a spot for 2022 on the women's side is Jessica McCauley, who had a superb season. We had a quick visit with the consistent Canadian. My name is Jessica McCauley. I'm 28 and I'm from Canada. When I think about Polignano, I think about beautiful sunshine, beautiful seas, lots of energy from the crowd. I think about uh, gelato and pizza and pasta and just good times. Going into the 2021 season, I was really excited to represent Canada. Um, I had one goal in mind and it was to podium at every single competition. So far, I've gotten four out of four. Um, coming into the last stop, I hope to continue the streak. Competing with a teammate um, and having Molly here really pushes me, and I know I push her too. Um, we see each other perform well, and um, it's all friendly competition. I want her to do the best that she can do, and she wants me to do the best I can do. Um, so when I see her do good, it just motivates me to do good as well. All right, looking forward to seeing Jess McCauley in her fourth and final dive, but women's standings overall for the 2021 series, we alluded to it earlier, Rihanna Nifflin has a perfect season so far. We'll see if that holds today. Jessica McCauley, who we just featured sitting in second, Molly Carlson in third. Now, Ellie Smart from the United States in fourth, and you see that right there with those three next divers, Joey, mm -hmm. it's a little dicey on who will win a spot for the 2022 season as a permanent diver, even though we'll take eight, but it's really important to maybe lock That's that right. up today that in the final stop. So you see the round out of the women's standings right there for the overall season as we get set for this final stop. As we mentioned, three rounds of diving have already happened. We'll get into the fourth and final dive. The women's platform is 21 meters, 70 feet off the Adriatic Sea and a beautiful setting. We've been here many times, Joey, and that is the historic bridge and there is the platform that is on the balcony or terrace of a private home <laughs> and the judges are are in the boat and uh hopefully they'll uh hopefully they'll get seasick today but uh three no, no. three-time <laughs> european champ anka piper is the head judge today claudio de miro of italy is here and former canadian diver olivier moreau richard is on the boat julian linus of spain is here and then olympic diver and olympic judge Marion Reif of Austria will cap off the five judge panel. All kinds of things floating out there. The fan base absolutely huge. That's what I want. I want the underwater shot. Stop. The top water shot. <laughs> That's great. A lot of people always wonder what the water temperature is. 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. It is seawater. We are on the Adriatic Sea here off the coast of Pugliano Amare. And look at that, Joey. The fans have been phenomenal here in Pugliano Amare. And a lot to see the new youngster uh, on the women's side, 
Cassetti, and then of course Alessandro De Rose, who we'll see on the men's side pretty soon. So the start list looks like this. Jackie Valeni is a scratch, not feeling well, so she removed herself from this fourth and final round. And it is the lowest scores from the first three rounds, which will go first. So you see it down running eighth is Jessica McCauley. Ellie Smart, by the way, running seven. We told, talked about that battle for a permanent diver spot for the 2022 season. Now there is the top four right there that will dive last. Nessie Rava, Panisi, Carlson, and Rihanna Niflin will be the last to go on the women's side. So you see, again, the women's the men's platform is on top. The women's platform just below that, again, at 21 meters, 70 feet off the water. Here's Schmidbauer steps up to the platform, the first diver to go in the fourth and final round for the women. Very high degree of difficulty. That's right, you've got to push the limits. So high degree of difficulty comes with high risk, but of course you've still got to get great scores from the judges. That's what she's looking for. She debuted this dive in 2019 in Beirut. Look at the crowd today, Trace, roaring. All the spectators and paddle boards, boats, kayaks on the cliff. What a day we have for the finale. Everything buoyant, and we'll get into all the great conditions here and why the divers like Juaniano Amare as a dive spot, especially at the finale. Now, Jürgen Schmidbauer of Germany needs a good result here, Joey, if she wants to earn some points to get a diver spot next year on the World Series. That's right. Very, very important. Fourth and final round, we're watching 21 meters high. One of the hardest dives we've got in the competition for the women. Look at that, you can get a taste of what it's like. Joey dropping 70 feet, 21 meters into the Adriatic as Schmidbauer of Germany kicks off the fourth round. So happy for Iris. She had a few struggles with this dive in the previous competition, but she's made a great comeback. And it's really, really important in the sport of cliff diving. The start of the dive has to be right. So the takeoff has to be powerful. It has to be nice and high. Let's have a look at the shot here. So bending the knees, jumping up as strong as she can with maximum effort and power, reaching up into the one and a half twists entering into the pike position for the second part of the dive. Pike is where the legs are straight and folded against the body. The acceleration curve picking up there around about 71 kilometers per hour. Huge G-forces. You can see all the rescue divers in the water, making sure all the athletes are safe. So she'll get a ride back to the Pebble Beach, to the shoreline. The judges, five of them. The high and the low toss, as I mentioned. So she gets an 83 on that dive, 236.75. So all four scores are added together for the grand total. So Schmidbauer to kick things off here in this round. Greg Luganis, four-time Olympic champion. What a great guy. He's our Red Bull cliff diving sports director, making sure everything's cool and safe. Keeps an eye on the timing, the surrounding elements, the conditions, and make sure the divers are safe. But Boy, it's been fun to catch up with Greg at this stop, just over breakfast and coffee and, and catch up with. He has so, so many amazing stories. It's Hassan next to him, a competition of, director, doing a great job too. Yeah, a lot of great advice from Greg Luganis for the athletes in terms of mentoring, how to get into the right mindset, the types of things you should be focusing on. This is where the nerves start to really build up. If you don't think these athletes aren't scared, well, let me tell you, they are. Antonia. Antonina Vishibanova, the wild power diver of Ukraine. Now, love this dive. Arm stand. If you're new to cliff diving, watch this. And if it wasn't difficult enough to stand on the platform, she's going to place her hands carefully and then press up. Is there grip on the end of that? A little grip? There is. It's very, very important. I just need to have grip to be able to take off. We're set. Vishvanova going deep into the Adriatic over about five to six meters, depending on the swells. 16 to, 12, 16 to 20 feet is the depth of the water. And how clear is that water today? It's phenomenal. It is, actually. But the transparent water can make it a little bit difficult for the athletes to see the surface. 
So you can actually see a water spray at the end of the dive here, and the water spray will spray it, not to make it a softer landing, but so the athletes can see the water better, particularly in idyllic conditions here today. But here's the arm stand, so she pikes there and then flicks the legs, that's called a kip, to generate the rotation, using the abs to squeeze into the pike. So we'd like to see the pike a little deeper. Ideally, you want to see it folded like a pocket knife. And there's the last part of the dive, which is called a barani. Now they're landing feet first, as opposed to head first, like we see in the Olympics. In the Olympics, they're diving from 10 meters. So massive speeds here, too fast and too high for head first entries. There are the judges. She's married to Nikita Fedotov, who we'll see on the men's side here shortly. Her father, Oleg, competed in the first year of the World Series in 2009. So Visha Vanova with an 88. You add all four together for a 271.35. So Visha Vanova actually sits in second behind Rihanna Nifflin, who hasn't even hasn't even taken her fourth round dive yet. That's so how many points she has. So again, the Italian fans. Hats off to that crew out there. One support. We're in the wrong place. We need to be in a boat. We need to be in a boat out there. All right. That's why the crowd was going nuts. Lisa Cassetti of Italy, the 19-year-old in her debut on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Not bad for yes. the first timer. Yes. Wow. I just love listening to the Italian crowd roar and cheer. Imagine that, 90 years of age in front of the home crowd for the very first time. And her, uh, her second round dive was absolutely sensational. I mean, not only her debut, Joey, but in her home country in front of this large audience, that has to be nerve wracking. I'm sure you've been in that position before as a youngster. I mean, this is her first ever competition period and let's do it in front of the home crowd. Talk <laughs> about pressure, but she's handled it very well. So she's being smart. She's choosing to play it safe and go with easier dives, but with more experience, then she'll be able to increase the degree of difficulty. Degree of difficulty meaning performing more somersaults and twists. So the more somersaults and twists you perform, the higher the tariff. It is these beautiful slow motion shots and uh, getting a bit of mentoring from Alessandro De Rose yeah. as well. First Italian female diver to make her way yep. onto the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. So welcome young Elisa Cassetti. Welcome indeed. Yeah. Wow, what a buzz. All right, she'll keep two seven and a halfs and a seven. Multiply those by the degree of difficulty, 68, and then a 256 total for the youngster. So what a great experience and an opportunity. <laughs> That's great. I love it. It's awesome. All right, 11 women in this round. Jackie Valeni is a scratch, as we mentioned earlier. So now we go up to the top of the platform, 70 feet. 21 meters off the Adriatic is Maria Paula Quintero, the Colombian. Second place here in Poniano Amari in 2019. That remains her best finish on the World Series. Great shot right there of the famous Pebble Beach in town. Quintero throwing it down with everything she's got. Orlando Duque there coaching her and mentoring her. Big kiss to the camera after that dive. So relieving. So before you take off the platform, you really start to feel the heart rate rising. You've got to control the nerves and the fear. But this is spinning in towards the platform here. So you have to do dives where you spin in different directions. So in towards the platform, hence the name, inward. And there's the Barani, the last part of the dive, which we'll talk about a little bit more later in the show in more detail. Throwing like a soccer ball into it, feeling that heavy sensation coming towards there, coming around, spotting the water. And it's so, so hard to make those final adjustments. These athletes are very strong. She's got a great work ethic, actually, so she was training in Utah, putting in some big hours in her high diving training. That was this past summer, training at the tower, diving tower, that Ellie Smart and Owen Weymouth were able to build into the freestyle skiing aerial pool in Park City, Utah. 74 on that dive, 269.95. So, Quintero in third right now. Ifflin still holding down the lead. We're going to see her dive last. My lord. And that 
that right there, the angry snake we called it the other day because of the swells and the waves rolling in. We're just rocking that thing like a... Now it's a catwalk. Like a, <laughs> now it's a catwalk. There's Rihanna Nifflin walking through the small village of Polignano Amare. A beautiful, beautiful place with whitewashed streets. So much great history here as we head to the top of the platform now for our next diver on the women's side. Emily Carpenter, 33 years old from the United States. Very strong story, showing at the last two stops with two seventh place finishes. Mealy Carpenter showing us degree of difficulty, although a slight miscalculation on the end. Commendable for the bravery and the high DD. So Mealy has done a lot of work in shows such as the House of Dancing Water, which is much like Cirque du Soleil. So she's got a lot of experience diving indoors, so she's gaining valuable experience in this circumstance by diving outdoors. But the previous competition in Puglia, huge waves and strong winds. Good takeoff coming around here, landing ever so slightly shorter vertical. Bit of a punch in the chest there. Outside of diving, she earned two bachelor's degrees, chemistry and psychology, and a master's degree in education. So a lot going on outside of yeah, very, very off bright the 70-foot platform. Very, very bright lady. So she got the call actually when she was in Ireland to actually be a wild card at about 9 o'clock in the morning. And they asked her and said, hey, can you turn up at uh, the airport <laughs> at 3 p.m.? She said, uh, OK, sure. But she's done a great job handling the conditions. Great to see some new faces in the Rebel Cliff Diving scene. Right. Mealy Carpenter is five to go of this field of 11. And she'll come into the grand total after you add all four dives together. 59 right there, so still holding down the top spot as Iflin with her strong three rounds of diving. Fans are packed in for the world's best here. You just joined us. This is the final stop of our 2021 Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Freshly engaged to Owen Weymouth, Ali Smart. They got engaged just a couple nights ago right here in Poliano Mare. Ali Smart needs a really strong dive to earn that spot next year. Yeah! Wow! It's <laughs> not a drop. There's Ali Smart's mother jumping up and down and actually hugging Owen Wayne's mother, incidentally. And a big fist pump for Ellie Smart. Just love seeing this twisting action here today. Ellie and Owen's parents came to town for the big occasion. That and they did. At one of our Red Bull welcoming parties. Hey. Did the proposal over the microphone. Strong performance by Wayman. Anyway. There we go. A bit of a good luck charm. <laughs> okay, being engaged to Owen there. Wow. I just love it. And what I like about these dives is that each of the athletes are showing different styles of diving. So she's showing twisting here. So one and a half twists. Holding on a little bit longer. She feels that time to coming out. The arms come out wide to stop the twist. And then once again, watch her eyes, keeping her eyes in the water, keeping her eyes in the water. The arms come into the body to be streamlined and the feet flatten a little bit to make a hole for the body to pass through. So if you have your toes pointed a little bit too much, sometimes it's hard to get those rip entry. What's a rip entry? Hey, that's a no splash dive. That's what we're looking for to impress the judges. Founder and CEO of the Clean Cliffs Project with a 95 on that. So finally we have somebody taking over the lead from Rihanna Nilflin's first three rounds of diving. So Ellie Smart, and there is Omen, Owen Weymouth. And of course, Blake Aldridge right there, good friends. 311-70 is the new score to beat by Ellie Smart. And the fans continue to roll in here in the beautiful town of Poniano Mare. Yeah, they're like, hurry up, we're late. We've missed the first few dives. Right. McCauley. Former British diver, now representing Canada. We got to know her a little bit better earlier in our feature. On the podium at every stop this season, it goes without saying that she is the most consistent diver next to Rhiannon Ifland. So strong, she'll earn her 2022 permanent diver spot. Oh, just so nice away. in the air. She's everything, everything we like to see in terms of style. She's got a beautiful long lines. So the sport of diving is aesthetic. So the judges have to look at the takeoff, the flight in the air, and of course the entry. 
They look for those graceful lines, you know, where the toes are pointed. <laughs> I love the, the yeah. pump up, the ramp up before. Okay, watch how the arms jump up. Beautiful, beautiful pike position. This dive is very, very important in terms of aerial awareness. It's very easy to get lost in the sport of cliff diving and diving. So to orientate themselves, they try and find the water every time. So watch this coming up. Watch the head here. Little flick back. One. She sees it there. The head will flick back twice. And she knows now, OK, I've just seen it twice. I need to come out of the dive. And the third part right there, that's the relieving moment where you go, whew. I'm seeing the water, but that comes up so quick on those particular dives. When you're doing a Burani, the front somersault, with a half twist at the end of the dive, you have more time to see it. So these dives have what's called an unnatural entry bonus because you see the water later. And we'll hear a little bit more about that Burani later in the show when Joey breaks it down in his methods of motion. But for now, Jessica McCauley awaits her score. Ellie Smart with a 3.11 leads the way. 92 on that fourth and final dive and you add it together with the first three Macaulay 30985 so smart continues to lead the way here in this women's fourth round at the final stop and what a shot of Ponyato Amare the rooftop terraces overlooking the sea breathtaking Yana Netirava now stepping up to the women's platform once again 21 meters 70 feet off the water that is 22 degrees Celsius, 72 degrees Fahrenheit for those who love those stats. And the water depth, five to six meters, maybe 16 to 20 feet right there, depending on the swells. Great shot under the historic bridge, awaiting the 29-year-old of Belarus, who resides in Minsk, sixth in the series ranking, just like Ellie Smart, an important dive, Joey, here to try and earn that fourth and final permanent diver position for 2022. We'll get in more on that in a little bit. But right now, Nestiarava, who placed third here three different years, loves this site. Ellie Smart knows the pressure. Whoa, testing the waters with the one and a half twisting triple for Yana Nestriava. Round of applause from all the athletes. It's a lot of respect amongst all of the athletes. They all understand what it's like to stand on that platform feeling nervous and scared. We talk about this permanent diver spots for mm -hmm. next year, right? Mm -hmm. Four men, four women auto automatically earn a spot. That's right. After today, mm -hmm. all right? But then the remaining four, there's eight total permanent divers next year. The remaining four will be decided on other events by FINA. That's right. But it's nice to get it out of the way here, right? And that's exactly what we're going to do in the last competition. Great underwater shots there. So these dives, you have to throw as hard as you can, throwing the arm like you throw a soccer ball just to get it moving. This is where you really start to feel that centrifugal force it's hard to pull into the legs so in total four rounds of diving like trace was saying we have required dives more simple and graceful dives but this is all about pushing the absolute limits of the sport there you go with your centrifugal force again not to be confused with angular velocity which actually gives the rate at which the object is turning through the curve so a little bit different yep, yep. twist there the Angular velocity, I'm going to throw at you, Joey. Nice, Nestia Charles, Rava. you've yeah. done your homework. Oh, you. I love it. All right, it's a pretty big score right there. Just squeaks ahead of Ellie Smart with a 3.11.75. Wow, it is a tight competition. Nestia Rava now in the lead with that 3.11. And there is only three divers remaining. As you see, Nestia Rava, that 3.11. Smart now in second. McCauley in third. Iflen will see momentarily, but first we'll look at Panisi and Carlson, who is leading after three rounds of diving for the women. Men's competition coming up, and there is the Italian rock star, Alessandro De Rossi. Wait till you see when he steps out onto the platform. The crowd goes absolutely berserk, so looking forward to seeing him. There's that fan base. The final stop. Oh, <laughs> this is amazing. What an amazing turnout we have here today. This is on the kind of the Achilles heel of the Italian boot in southern Italy. Beautiful location. It's getting important now. It's Ante Panissi. She wants to take the lead. She's got a score above sevens. She can do this. Can she get another podium?
Stupanisi right there. This is a tight competition, Joey, between Smart, Nestiarava, and now Xanthia Panisi. She says, not so fast, ladies. She is hunting down her <laughs> second podium. Wow. The emotion. I mean, you're so relieved after the dive to feel safe, but then to do the dive like that, huge smiles. Huge pressure, wow. too, here. Huge pressure. This is great. Seeing all that experience during the season come into play with this particular dive, fourth and final round. So much pressure on her shoulders. I'm sure she's putting on herself. She badly wants that podium. And as you said, she wants to be qualified next year for the 2022 season. Let's look at the dive. The arms reach up. There's a half turn there. Quickly turns over into the somersaulting part, the pike position. That's where you keep the legs straight. She's holding on, looking at the water. But the question I have in my mind is what will the judges think of the dive? Was the takeoff good? Was the flight good? Was the entry? Mm -hmm -hmm. Yes, it was. It's gonna be some interesting math because all of the divers get a scratch result, as you mentioned at the top of the show, Joey. Yes, so yes, she yes, will yes. throw away eight, eight and a half. She'll toss one of the nines. She'll keep two nines and an eight and a half. And she is stoked. A little flip there to <laughs> celebrate. Hey, I haven't done enough flips. I need to do one more. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and pushes Macaulay off the podium, moves into the number one spot with a 3.33 flat. So Panisi now putting herself in a good position for a permanent diver position, depending on that scratch result and who sort of weaves their way into these results as we are down to the final two competitors in the ladies' competition. Molly Carlson and Rhiannon Ifland yet to drop off the terrace of the Labate home, the private home of the great family who's welcomed these divers for many, many years. All right, Molly Carlson just turned 23 last Thursday. Now, Joey, her life sort of changed since June this year. First, she got the invite to the first stop, placed second in France, earned a spot to the rest of the season, and then she ends the season in the top three, she's already earned that, and will represent on the series as a full-time diver and permanent diver in 2022. How about that? Talk about talent. And she's actually only started cliff diving and high diving since August last year. She made a great transition from traditional diving into cliff diving. Here we go. and strutting her stuff on the world stage. Competing with the best in her very first season. Wow. Molly Carlson trying to get on top of that podium and shut down a season sweep by Rihanna Nifflin, by the way. And she held the lead after the first two rounds. Mind you, she had superb execution. So this is the inward triple half coming around at the last part of the dive. So difficult to make those adjustments. Just slightly short of vertical. What okay. does short of vertical mean? That means the water's coming towards the chest. You can see the tuck position, the toes pointed. Beautiful. Very strong takeoff. Coming out early. And then let's look here carefully. And you just see that she doesn't quite make the vertical line, but that is being super, super picky, but really drew down the splash. And we've got those nice flat seas today. That really helps with the rip entries. The previous competition, waves slapping around everywhere. Super excited to see if she can run or move into the lead with this particular dive. She's in the running for that. Hello, judges. What do you think? Well, they think at 95 on that one. She'll keep two eight and a halves and an eight, Joey. So rolling that up, 354.95 for the rookie Canadian in this 2021 season. First place guaranteed a podium, along with Xanthia Panisi guaranteed a podium in the second of her career and the second of this season. And now, Rhiannon Ifland, the 29-year-old, who has already secured the 2021 King Kaakili Trophy, going for 13 straight wins right here, right now, across three seasons. And two straight seasons, Joey, of going undefeated. Her winning streak began here in Ponyano Mari, during the 2018 final, can she fend off Molly Carlson? 
This has been a great contest. You know, Molly Carlson's been on fire here, but so has Rhiannon. Exact same dive as Molly Carlson. She's got the lead. But can she win here today to cap it off? Molly and Xanthina guaranteed a podium. They're psyched, as they should be. Nesti Arava on the bubble in third. Oh, there you go! Yes! <laughs> Rihanna Niflan, the dominant force in the cliff diving scene. Consistent, brilliant, an acrobatic genius. Whoa. Remarkable read, rallies again. What a dive. Oh, soak it up. Love How does back. she do it? How does she do it, Joey? You've been in this sport a long time. This is you, this yeah. is ridiculous how consistent she is. Well, you've got to have the technical background, too. She's got a really high technical background in the sport of trampolining, where they land feet first a lot. Then she transferred into diving, representing Australia in some international events. So she's got a high caliber, great technique, and then mentally, She's very strong. The other thing is this, you can't deny it, this is raw talent as well. It just comes to her naturally as well. Great ability to dive very well under pressure. So quite often she's the last person standing on the platform. That is incredibly nerve wracking, but every time she holds her nerve and then she demonstrates why she is one of the greatest cliff divers on the planet. Very, very rare you see someone like this in any sport whatsoever. Yeah. Nines across the board as far as the three that she will keep. She'll toss a nine and a half and an eight and a half. 102-60. Folks, Rhiannon Iflin once again rocks the World Series. Super. An undefeated season. Two in a row. Win number 13. <laughs> across three seasons. Xanthi Panissi there on the podium again for another third place finish. Hugs from Molly Carlson, who's in second. What a thrilling day. What a thrilling competition. And I was talking to Greg Luganis about Rhiannon, and Greg said she just goes for it. Mm -hmm. She just loves what she does, and Doesn't she just goes back. for it. And this is exactly why she's on top of that results list right there. But how about Molly Carlson? Another podium for her this season in second. Xanthia Panisi with the second for her of her career and this season. So then again, we'll have to do the math on the points between Nasirava, Smart, and others. So. We'll head down to the beach with David O'Queeve, who is with Rihanna Nifflin, Dave. Rihanna, another win. Was there more pressure today? You had to close out a perfect season. How was it out there? Yeah, there was definitely, most certainly more pressure today. Uh, yesterday, the first dive, uh, I put the pressure on myself, really. I didn't feel it and uh, it didn't go so well. So uh, yeah, today the goal was to come in, have fun, and uh, yeah, absolutely now the, the finishing dives of the season. And what about the crowd here? It's the first time we've really had that big, big atmosphere. Did that contribute to your dive? Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we always love the crowd here in Italy, so grazie. Um, yeah, it, it certainly does, you know. Stand up there, you know, everyone's supporting you. Uh, my first dive, there was a little bit of noise and uh, it made me a little bit nervous, but I loved it. And what does it mean to receive the King Kai Trilly Trophy today, again, another time here in Polignano? Yeah, now I can believe it. Uh, you know, winning and winning it after the last stop. Uh, I kind of was thinking to myself, no, I can't relax yet. I have one more stop to go. And uh, oh, now I can relax and celebrate. I'm so proud of myself. I, I really can't believe it. Congratulations and thank you, Rihanna. Thanks very much. Such an inspiring competitor, Joey, and to the other competitors as well. I mean, so many of the ladies out there and men learn from Rihanna Nifflin. But let's recap all four dives. We just saw her fourth one, but let's just take a look at all four of them. And proud she should be, as yeah. she said. Very proud. This is so nice to watch these graceful dives. Called the required dives. Quite often you just see those single layout somersaults, and the crowd seems to love them. They always got to roar and cheer. Then you have an intermediate dive where you're stepping up the degree of difficulty, not to the maximum level, just to show a variety of skills. So this is called the triple half. This is a pretty common skill that you actually see in trampolining. 
But just look at how everything moves from one position to another seamlessly. The athletes that make it look easy are the ones to look out for. And here is a big degree of difficulty dive that she likes to do in round three just to get it over and done with, just to kind of feel a bit more relaxed coming into the fourth and final round. But I dare say we'll see some uh, new dives from her. Look how deep she goes there into the water as well, traveling down to around about four to five meters. And of course, there is the dive that sealed the deal to take the win here. Her 13th straight win across three seasons. Round four, the inward triple half for Rihanna Nifland. Magic. Now Cliff has, diving expert and a genius. Yeah, now has won 23 World Series events total. We talk about 13 straight, but she's won number 23. And the celebration and party begins for the ladies. So, Xanthi Panisi, congratulations. Third place here today at the final stop of the season. That will bode well for her when you do the calculations to get that permanent diver spot. But wait to make that official as Molly Carlson makes her way up to the podium. So Molly Carlson started the season as a wild card because of those great performances. She's managed to compete in all the stops this season. And she'll be heading into 2022 as a permanent series diver. Oh. Rihanna Nifland had a 78% chance of winning today. That's, that's how dominant she is right. in this sport. And, uh, the theme of this event, by the way, the uh, the lights, Luminare. That's uh, there what we go. see there with the... I think we've got to turn the, the batteries on, get the lights going. With the trophies, Joey, and that uh, is part of the platform design you see in the background. Raise the trophies high, all three ladies. You must be proud of yourself. Very compact season. Yeah, for obvious reasons, and the athletes and even the crew behind the scenes doing a phenomenal job at that. setting records up and down. And there you have it, the series standings. Randa Nifflin with a perfect season. Jessica McCauley in second, Molly Carlson in third. So we expected that, but Xanthia Panisi with that podium finish will earn her a permanent diver position for the 2022 season. But you have Nestor Yorava and Smart and Quintero who still have a great shot and will earn those remaining four, I'm sure, through the FINA event coming up. What a day for Rihanna Nifflin, the champion here at the final stop of the 2021 season. All right, Trace Worthington, Joey Zuber back with you. Joey, let's discuss the methods of motion. Like most, if not all sports, they have their own theory of the importance of the basics and fundamentals, you know that. Give us an example of what is required in, in cliff diving, what really makes it tick. Yeah, so uh, one of the fundamental part of, parts of the dive is called the Barani, which is a control maneuver which allows you to adjust the landing. So look carefully at the end of the dive, what is it? It's a front somersault with a half twist. He comes out of the twist here, looking at the water, that is the Barani. Very important to be able to land in the water safely. And you can perform that at the end of most of the dives. So the complicated maneuvers are done in the first 10 meters, let's say the first 40%, but then they're traveling so fast, the remaining 60% of the dive is the Barani. And uh, we've got Gary Hunt, who has a fantastic Barani. He looks at the water right here, and he tries to keep his eyes on the water the entire time. So he's looking there, and then he starts to turn by putting his right arm in. That initiates the twist. And then you keep turning, and then the head keeps looking at the water, making those final adjustments. 
just like an aircraft coming in for landing. The arms come wide to stop the twist to make sure he doesn't continue the rotation. At that point, then he makes these microscopic adjustments by lifting his chest at the right time. Split second adjustments. The arms come in line with the body, flatten the feet a little bit for the perfect landing. Gary Hunt, what a fine example. Great job, Joey. Thank you very much. Did you learn something? The methods of motion, love it. So, pulling down Almade. That caps off a great women's competition. We're gonna dive right into the men here in a second. Stop number six, the final of our 2021 series. Before we get to the men's fourth and final round, let's check out what went down earlier in the first three rounds of diving. Great competition so far. Alessandro De Rose, how about this particular dive? Oh. <laughs> 10, or oh, actually one 10 from the judges. Superb stuff. So this is required dive round, showing the more simple and graceful maneuvers. And then how about this man, Catalan Preda, guess what? Join the straight tens club. <laughs> wow, one of four men to score straight tens across all five judges. The inward flying somersault, a very rare dive, but executed superbly. And then how about this? Gary Hunt says, okay, check this out. And in typical Gary Hunt style, another <laughs> set of straight tens from the judges, the second time in his career. So joining his uh, 10 club for the second time. Remarkable, he just gets better and better. And then Alessandro De Rose just rising to the occasion, just like the or the houses rise from the cliff, steady balance in the handstand. And look how he performs in front of the Italian crowd. Bang, down she goes. Incredible. And I do believe he scored two tens on that particular skill. And that is a confidence that he needs coming into the fourth and final round here today. Beautiful shots. Willie has seen a coastline stretching over 800 kilometers, 500 miles, leading into Ponyano Amare, Italy. Gary Hunt in the overall standing points. He will lock up another King Kaakili trophy based on the last stop in Puglia. Konstantin Popovich in the mix and Katlin Preda. They will all earn spots for the next season as permanent divers. And you see Steve Laboo right there, ranked number 12. He'll be a topic in a little bit. It will be his final stop as a full-time diver on the series. We'll get to that in a moment. Speaking of, speaking of Steve Laboo, end of an era for one of the best in the business. Steve from the United States will retire as a full-time diver from the World Series after nearly a decade. 66 career starts, including 18 podiums and five victories. What a career. That he is. He's an absolute legend. He is. Steve Lobu right here. Some highlights of his past decade on the World Series, Joey. And that's right. And with the ups comes the downs. So Unfortunately, in this competition in La Rochelle, France, striking his head on the platform. You'll be able to see it here shortly. And uh, that's always very difficult, but he was so brave and resilient to come back after that. And check this out. At the end of the season in 2015, what a comeback to take the win after striking his head on the platform. Here's some great highlights. One of his wins, placing first in Portugal. And here's the competition. Very windy and rough seas at the event previous to this particular tour stop, but showing his resilience and bravery as, all, as always. But uh, Trace, we've got to say this, uh, Steve Labou, we will all miss you very, very much indeed. I'm sure his wife, Lindsay, will glad to have him around a little more often. This happened earlier today as he kicked off the competition with an opening dive. That's and right. His final dive as a full-time diver, Joey, one of the greats who can really take credit credit for making Red Bull cliff diving what it is today, right? That it is, yeah. I mean, technically brilliant, a real character in the sport, a kind of an ambassador, if you will. Great to see that finale dive, just to send him off. And what a career. And he's really pushed the limits in the sport, performing a front five somersault, one of the first people in the world to do that in the pike position. So pioneering athlete as well. And they have a great project going on that he's involved with in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But David O'Queeve is on the beach with Mr. Lobu. Dave. 
Steve, you've had an incredibly colourful career. What was it like up there for the last time as a full-time professional diver? Oh my gosh, uh, just so many emotions. Uh, I started to tear up really thinking about it. I uh, had a, kind of a hard time doing the farewell dive, but just so happy to fly one more time off a Red Bull platform. Um, I've, I've always said that I feel genuinely fortunate to be able to travel the world with some of my closest friends doing what we love, uh, and I, I just couldn't be happier to, to wrap it up in such a beautiful place. And with so many moments, if you had to pick a few highlights, what would they be? I mean, I think earning the title of world champion has to stand out. Um, you know, giving Gary Hunt a run for his money in 2018, anytime you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a legend, uh, it definitely creates some memories. So really, really super thankful for, obviously, the past 10 years of, of just wonderful memories. And what's next for Steve Labou? Well, the beautiful part is I'm, I'm phasing out of competition slowly, um, but with the, the building of the platform in Fort Lauderdale, I'm, I'm really looking forward to transitioning into the back end and really helping some of these younger divers uh, come up the right way in a safe environment so we can uh, continue to, to push the sport of high diving. Amazing. Thanks so much, Steve. Thank you, guys. You rock, Steve. Emotional moment for one of the all-time greats of cliff diving, Steve Labou. It's hard to let go sometimes. Yeah. I mean, the camaraderie amongst the athletes, the feeling of being in competition and the pressure. Back to business here in the final round of diving for the men. Here's the start list. A reminder that the lowest scores from the first three rounds will kick things off. So that's Carlos Gamito and Andy Jones. You have Silchenko running third, Kulturi from the United States six, Popovich in seventh. That's not a usual place for the Romanian. Aiden Heslop having an outstanding season as a wild card diver will run eighth. There's the big four. Guzman, Preda, Gary Hunt, but Alessandro Dorose of Italy with the top score will dive last. And you will hear a huge roar by this crowd in Poignan Almari when he steps, steps up to the platform. Oh, how about that? Last man on the platform. But now it's all about Carlos Camino. Impressive wild card divers of the season after a pair of fourth place finishes, and one of them in Ireland, where he was not only the first diver to perform an arm stand dive directly from the cliff face, but he earned perfect tens from the judges across the board on that. So he joins the 10 club and we'll see what he can get done here in Buñano Mare. Very interesting dive coming up. Why arm stand versus just going straight off when you have the choice? Good question. So with the arm stand, it increases the degree of difficulty. Here we go. It's got to stay steady. Strong fourth and final round. What a dive to set the pace. Smoke the, the entry. So watch this. This is an arm stand cut through or reverse. So they cut back in towards the platform. It's a very rare dive. And you can see the entry just punching it nice and strong. So watch this. And he has to bend the legs and then throw back towards the platform. That's called reverse or cut through in this particular circumstance from the arm stand dive. Coming around looking at the water. Kicking edge, got to look at his toes. The unnatural entry, that classic arch kind of style there. So we're at 27 meters now. The speed that they're picking up to is 85 kilometers per hour, around 10 G forces. You can see that water spray there, making sure <laughs> you can see the surface properly. A okay, and I like the dive. Oh, there's a 10. Ooh. One of the judges, it looks like Julian Linus loves it. Enough to give him a 10, a perfect score, I believe. And we have a 134.40 giant score, 342.60. We've seen so many 10s this season, but this shows you the standard yeah. of the execution, the standard of diving, and how the sport is progressing and improving. This is sensational stuff. A walk on the famous beach in downtown Polignano Amare. The Lama Manakile Beach, to be specific, as we go to the top now of the men's platform. 27 meters, 90 feet off the ocean is Andy Jones, the 36-year-old American. And 
his 54th start on the World Series. And Andy and his wife, Alina, expecting their second child in the middle of October. That's coming up, obviously. And a baby boy, in fact. No big deal now. He's just diving 70 feet. Easy. On the platform and pulling out. Easy. How hard can it be? <laughs> Very hard. Let me tell you. Let's get set. Jones, a taller diver, drills it in. Looks nice. Steve Lobu, his good friend, likes it. Both these guys have a very funny sense of humor when not <laughs> serious do. about diving. But boy, what a way to end round four. Andy Jones, he always knows where the water is and always knows how to sneak through it with that beautiful rip entry. The vanishing act. <laughs> okay, on his feet this time, coming around. Standing nice and tall, punching. You can see him just scoot forwards a little bit there underneath the water. So some divers will choose to do the twist at the beginning or the twist in the middle of the dive. And so the athletes have to choose dives that they feel most comfortable with. The aerial awareness is key in this sport. That is the thing that they're most afraid of. So before the competition, they're always feeling nervous. When I used to dive, I used to wake up even nervous in the morning, sort of thinking about my dives. You've got to be able to picture that dive perfectly in the mind before. And this people, is what, yeah. A lot of people do ask about the fear. And I've, I've yep. seen people ask you about the fear yep. as a former cliff diver. It's always there, and I think you do need it. But if you don't have that feeling of nerves before the dive, you won't have that feeling of elation and satisfaction of facing your fears and being able to perform the dive. So you've got to push the limits sometimes. You've got to push yourself through that uh, uncomfortable zone, let's say. And then the reward is walking up to the beach afterwards. 112.70, 336.25 for Mr. Jones of the United States. So Jones in second behind Gamino of Spain. Lebrou giving a bit of coaching tips. You better listen to him because he's a mighty fine cliff diver. Steve's like, I'm a coach now. Yeah, yeah I'm a, I, I took my uh, last dive, so I'm, I'm, I'm I, coaching. He's got, the, he's got the job lined up already. Look at a beautiful shot the other way, looking at the old historic bridge. And uh, boy, it is cool here in downtown Point Out Almaty. Artem Selchenko, love watching this guy, does something very unique. Joey, why don't you mm -hmm. give him that? This is his 63rd career star on the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series and winner of 11 of them since he started in 2009. Second of all time wins behind Gary Hunt. So he's a blind entry specialist, got massive degree of difficulty, 5.3, back arm stand, two and a half somersaults, two and a half twists. We'll talk about what makes this dive unique. The highest oh. go! <laughs> Artem Shilchenko, but pushing the limits, throwing the dive down with everything he's got. He's got a big smile. He knows he's missed the end of the dive. I just love watching that, though. Yes. I, I, you know, the, the landing to me, again, for those new to cliff diving, yeah. still pretty cool looking dive. It is. So at the end of the dive, we're talking about the Varani before the front somersault with a half twist, allowing you to see the water right to the very end. He's doing the opposite. It's called a blind entry. Watch how he comes out of the dive here, sees the water. Now he turns over, he's blind. And so what he's trying to do is use peripheral vision or try to find some markers, the cliff face or the scuba divers down below to adjust for the landing. He gets it a bonus for the degree of difficulty, but it makes it harder to hit the landing. So you can see he's landed shorter vertical on this dive. So watch this again. Okay, he comes around. Instead of barraning and doing the half turn, he says, okay, there it is, and then quickly tucks over. But right there, you don't really know where the water is exactly. <laughs> And you can see how forceful the impact is there. And he's like, I was almost there, almost. <laughs> and he was. And we're just talking about you need to be just slightly off that vertical line to kick up the splash. And you can see him saying, oh, I almost had it. Slowly, slowly. You almost fell into his Artem accent. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Artem Silchenko, low scores on that. Fans love it. Unique, super high. In fact, the highest degree of difficulty. Props to Silchenko who is 37 years old and only one of four men in the history of the World Series to win the King Kai Keeley Trophy. And a reminder, follow us on social media, Red Bull Cliff Diving's Facebook page. Subscribe to the Red Bull Cliff Diving YouTube channel. And of course, follow us on Instagram at Red Bull Cliff Diving. Photos, videos, cool stories, and much more. And of course, there'll be great photos from this stop in Ponyano Omari. Joey Zuber's selfie game, super strong in this town right this week. So. Back to the top now, Nikita Fedotov. 
this men's fourth and final round. Three already in the books. Fedotov four out of the 12 to go. First podium in his first World Series showing. Replaced third in Mostar 2017. Backed it up with another third place finish in Mostar last month. See Nikita wearing a mouth guard. And this is coach Oleg Shivanov also competed in the Red Bull Fifth Diving World Series quite some years ago now. Arms above the head. We're ready. Nikita Fedotov showing us what Russian style is all about. Ran of applause and a clap from his coach over there. You saw Oleg, though, go mm, yeah, a, little a little bit. Little bit. It's like, mm. So what okay. does that mean as a, as a, as a cliff diver? Yeah, and Expert, Joey. Yeah, I mean, you do want to see the disappearing act. You want to see the rip entry, but we've got to talk about everything. So the takeoff and the flight has to be right, but just that last little bit of the dive, it's so easy to make a slight mistake coming around. Let's have a look here, and then just staying a little bit rounded. That's nothing. We're just talking about just the smallest of smallers of errors that can lead to just a bit of a splash there. So the divers all have their own kind of style, and sometimes different nations have their style, but look at his toe point in particular. You know, the divers in Russia spend a lot of time stretching their toes, making sure they got that arch foot, making sure everything's straight. So it's about aesthetics of sport of diving, keeping the arms straight, even the fingertips in line. Artem used to talk about it. Mm. So he used to get, you know, a little slap on the hand. Ah, make sure you keep your thumbs in, keep your hands tight. So every little detail adds up to the overall aesthetic of the sport. So the judges, once again, the takeoff, the flight, and the entry, what do they think? But still faring pretty well. Remember, five judges, the high and the low are tossed. The remaining three multiplied by the degree of difficulty. That is 4.3. So 107 on the fourth dive. You add that together, those who just joined us, to the first three rounds of diving. So Fedotov with a 369.70 will lead the way. Fedotov is four to go of 12. And there he is, Mikhail. Now, Ratil, he'll guaranteed he'll get this crowd fired up. The 36-year-old who uh, today will celebrate his 80th career start in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. Second most starts of any athlete. Gary Hunt has competed in every single tour stop in the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. But this guy loves the crowd, loves to get pumped up. Captain Energetic, we call him. It was fun seeing him the other day doing this. <laughs> and then his wife and the baby boy, Patrick, strolling through the... Uh, yeah, one day you're the a cliff diver, then you're a dad. <laughs> Mikhail Navratil showing us that, that experience counts. And his wife is always a fan of his, that's for sure. <laughs> Such an experienced athlete. So sometimes he does the super till, occasionally at the end of the, the show, does a running, flying somersault with the cape on. He's, he's a real showman, he really is. He's still just such a diving machine, Joey. I mean, it's really incredible to see his skill set at such a high level after 12 years on the World Series. Very, very athletic, always training. You've got to be very light and fit in the sport. So it's all about power in the sport, so you've got to be very explosive. I spent a lot of time doing plyometrics, working on the legs, getting everything strong, so now, Injuries come into play. See the water shot there. Quite often the legs want to pull apart, so it's very common to have a groin injury or knee injury. So the conditioning and the strength of the, in the preseason is very, very important. But you've got to work on the mind, and Greg talks about visualization as well. You know, being able to visualize it in a kinetic way of what it's going to feel like. And then you need to visualize the dive like you're looking at, at yourself on a television screen and picturing, okay, have I got the takeoff right? Picture that perfect takeoff, perfect position in the air. So Adding that mental training together with all the physical skills and the strength training makes a cliff diving athlete, but everything has to be right. There's so much that goes into this sport. Still pretty fit, 36 years old. So Navratil, the Czech Republic, the main frog, with the 372.75 will pull into the number one spot and set the pace here as we are approaching the midway point of this men's fourth and final round. 
It's Race Worthington, Joey Zuber along with you, Greg Luganis, our Red Bull Cliff Diving Sports Director. Watching fellow American David Colturi get set to go on the platform. I was talking to Greg about kinesthetic awareness and how people need to be aware of their body and the way it moves and the be current with their body. Let's get into that in a moment, but it was fascinating to talk to him about that. David Colturi. Whoa, 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 whoa. So, I mean, normally I would say David Colturi is a twisting technician. He's got a great technical background, but I will show you something in the replay. So he did momentarily lose his orientation. That is the biggest fear of all athletes. So most athletes spend a lot of time on the lower platforms, making sure they practice the somersaults and twists to get that right. But that's the biggest fear, and that's what happened right there. Let's have a look at this. It's also one of the biggest questions by people that don't know this sport well, Joey. Do people get lost? Do people lose mm -hmm. their way in the air? Do people get dizzy in yeah. the air? Yeah. So he's trying to complete three and a half twists, but he basically came out at three. I just need to look at it again. And he has actually done a dive with an extra twist, so sometimes you can get a little confused. Beautiful, beautiful takeoff. He's coming around here. Just gonna look at the moment where he comes out, and he's coming out there too early. He just needed to wait an extra half turn, or just before that last half turn, you can see him scrambling to get the dive around. But it's a very, very scary feeling because sometimes you'll come out at that point and you think, well, hang on a second, I'm not supposed to be looking that direction. So he was expecting to come out and actually see the cliff face and the platform back behind him. But he's obviously come out and seen what's in front of him. He's like, nah, that's not good. So unfortunate, Dave, when you catch up with him, which we do a lot, Joey, and he has been training so hard this summer to get in for him. And he is in such great shape. Area 47 in Austria and just moving there to make a big difference. Here's the walk up to the platform, up to a rooftop terrace of a private home. It's Catalan Freda, as you can see there. I mean, what, what an experience. <laughs> it is, you know, pass by, get a little lunch, have a little coffee. Oh, there's my cliff diving platform. All the divers and his fellow Romanian right here, 32-year-old Konstantin Popovich, who's not used to being in this position. He's usually in the top three coming into this round. But he's got a chance to come back into the lead. He's got huge DD, degree of difficulty. Wow. Strength is amazing. He raises his hands high. He knows he's done it. That's his coach as well. God, he's got to be so happy for him. I tell you what, Joey, like you watch the entry, and obviously we talk a lot about the entry, but his form in the air to somebody that looks at this sport from the outside just seems so light and graceful. He does. I mean, look at the twist, and then I like how quickly he gets into the position. So he's very fast. He knows how to kind of work the dive in the middle to pick up speed. So watch how that perfect vertical handstand kicks as hard as he can, digs deep again, comes around, comes out early. So he did um, compete in the Olympic game. Oh my, he nailed it. That is a vanishing act. So he did compete in the Olympic trials this year, narrowly missed it for Tokyo. So that just shows you the caliber of the athletes that we're watching here. I mean, this guy is so hungry. He's got grit, he's got determination, he's got focus. Very tough mindset as well. I love his attitude and I love that dive, Trace Worthington. Oh, we're gonna see some big scores, I expect. What a technician. Constant From start to finish. Oof. Here a, we go. On a roll with three second place finishes and a third. He has not missed the podium this entire season. And he is fired up. The question is. Will he be on top of the podium for the first time this year? Oh, yes. Yo, the tens go up. The tens. Welcome.
welcome to the Double Tens Men's Club. Oh, that's Gary's club, actually, by the way. So that's Gary's club. Yeah. He's in Gary's club. Oh, God. Gary's going to have to give him a robe now. No. Here's your robe. Here's your robe. OK. Come on, gentlemen. <laughs> Kick back and just wow. go out Hey, welcome on board. You're in the club now. Superb. And Gary will be like, welcome to the club. Welcome to club. Okay, but don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Konstantin Popovich trying to get on top of that podium box. It hasn't been easy this year with Gary Hunt, but maybe that will do it for him. So Popovich with 435.90. Absolutely lighting it up. Navratil, Fedotov rounding out the top three. Gamino bumped off the podium after that dive. So. Heslop, Guzman, Preda, Hunt, and Derose still to launch. Here's Aiden Heslop. What a season for the 19-year-old. And he has a shot at winning this final stop. And if he does so, he'll be the youngest ever to do that, winning a World Series. So he's been on the podium before, choosing the same dive as Gary Hunt for his fourth and final round. out for him only 19 years of age and to dive like that i mean he's been watching the rebel cliff diving world series since he's like an 11 year old him and owen weymouth and it was his dream to be on the rebel cliff diving world series but living the dream here today in the fourth and final round okay three and a half twists here at the beginning wow he twists so so fast so some man the entry is superb. So some divers just have that natural ability to twist really quick, wrapping across there. Super, super, super fast. Great error to win. Quickly sneaks in there and sneaks in a little shot of the water so he knows where he is coming around. And let me tell you, I bet he can do more difficult dives than this. And guess what? Now he's getting the execution right. Yes. Jump up and down, Aiden Heslop. We need to look out for him. Gary Hunt, watch out. He'll throw out a nine and a nine and a half, so that's huge. 143. So, Hasloff with 423.85, still couldn't do it. He's in second behind Popovich. So, Popovich under pressure and not running as one of the last divers. Big hug to Ellie Smart, by the way. You mentioned Owen Weymouth, fellow Brit. Owen Weymouth getting engaged to Ellie this past week. So Popovich, Heslop in second, and Navratil in third. So Guzman, Greta, Hunt, and Rose still yet to drop. And just take a stroll <laughs> got a through the whitewashed village in the streets of the historic Poniano Mare. Sergio Guzman getting the crowd ramped up. There we go. Feel the energy, feel the vibe. Two weeks ago, the Ireland stop was his first time diving from 27 meters since July of 2019. A long COVID break for a lot of the divers. But he has been strong here, especially running into the top four. So you're diving in the top four on this start list coming into the fourth and final round, Joey. It means you've you got a good three rounds of dive. Yeah, he killed his third round dive. Nines from the judges. But he's got to get focused and ready. It's another dive to do. Very interesting dive. No one else is doing this one in this competition. Reverse four somersaults in the tuck position. Last competition, 
and made up for it. He did with round three and four. This is round four. Now we're going to talk about aerial awareness again, but this time it's about the somersault. So with these somersaulting dives, you have to count the somersaults as you go by. So in total, like I said, that's four somersaults. Very difficult. You get more DD to jump off the, the platform in reverse. Watch this very carefully. The head will flick back once. Sees the water. Twice sees the water. Three times sees the water. Then he knows he needs to kick out just after that moment. He was a little slow, so he had to kick really vertical to keep up the, the rotation. So he had great aerial awareness and kicked out the exact moment. Not easy to do. Three second free fall, 80 kilometers per hour, 53 miles per hour, 10 Gs of physical force, Joey. Three times the height of a tradition, traditional 10 meter platform. You know, just going feet first, phenomenal here by all these divers. And look at the nines. You know, throw out a nine and a nine and a half. Keep a bunch of them. 126, will that do it for Guzman? 412 will not, but he's on the podium right now in third. With two divers, three divers remaining. Freda Hunt and Rose. I just hear you. Okay. There's Catalan Freda. Competition's heating up. It is heating up. Final stop of the 2021 season. Catalan Freda, who will join his fellow countrymate, Papa Bitch, as full time divers. Oh, he went quick. He lost the platform, his fellow Romanian. Little nods like, hmm, was it enough? Sorry, that was, was like enough. that was like talking during a guy driving the golf ball. Yeah, he was into it. A bit like Blake Aldrin, he wasted no time. Like, oh, <laughs> we're off, people. <laughs> okay. Sometimes you just have to go. All right, here's a back quad somersault with two twists. Just like Konstantin Popovich, so athletic, so fast. You can just see he was just a little rounded on the entry. It's still, he's in the running. Okay, yep, just needed to actually just lift that chest a little bit more to find the vertical line. And he won the first competition in France. He spent a lot of time working in Cirque du Soleil style shows such as the House of Dancing Water as well. He's worked so hard with his pre-season training. Very, very focused athlete. It's a real joy to watch him dive here today. I'm super, super keen to see what the scores will be and what that means for Catalan Preda here in Polignano Amare. Remember that first round dive, he joined that perfect 10 club. The first round at 132 and 433.20. So the Romanian second behind his friend, Konstantin Popovic. So 435.90 is the score to beat. Catalan Preda now in second with 433, Heslop on the bubble in third. Gary Hunt not in a usual position. He's usually diving last, but he has already secured his ninth King Kaakili trophy. Now Gary's got a bit of pressure on his shoulders here. He's got to perform. If he wants to take the lead, he's got to get eight and a half from the judges. He has to. Big DD, 5.2 for a total of 125.60. Folks, well, watching from the balcony as these houses rise so tall from the rocks, beautiful setting. It's Popovich, our leader, Fred in second. The magic oh. man once again. The oh. master of the triple quad. <laughs> Everyone just says, there you go. He just, God sees like, okay. He's done it again. <laughs> Handles the pressure. Gary Hunt. This man is supreme. See? Stunning diving. Stunning conditions. A thrilling final here in Polignano Amade today. Unbelievable. The stoke meter just went to the another, another level, Joey. I mean, it was like, no, I can't just, believe this. I he can't. just sends it. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and I talked about, I talked, I, mean, when it, when I was talking to, uh, about wow. Rhiannon Ifland to Greg Luganis. I said, well, what is it, Greg, about Gary? And he just said, well, he's a bit more calculated. I'm like, really? <laughs>
<laughs> oh, calculator. This guy is just pure precision. The acrobatic genius. We've been served with a first class platter of cliff diving by Gary Hunt yet again. This has been a stellar season, especially after that break. And just to see the level of the sport after the long break, massive jump off the platform. Yeah. Coming to three and a half twists, the triple quad, he was the first person in the world to do this particular dive. And we talk about the uniqueness of these divers, Rhiannon and how she approaches things, you know, that kind of go for it. Art, you know, Gary, a little bit more calculated in his area, in his arena, but it all rolls up to championship titles. It is really cool to see. All right, it's cool to see. I'm just gonna wait for the judges. That's all I need to see right now. And that's what we need to know. We need to know what they think and where, whoa! Hey, Joey, remember <laughs> remember when Popovich that one time joins Gary in the double wow. men's tennis club? Well, Gary now is in the third this men's is tennis club. This is short of unbelievable. Stands alone in the tennis club. Tennis club, okay, time three. Time three straight judges from all five athletes. Let me tell you, Konstantin Popovich is going to be like, right, next season, it's on. <laughs> All right, let's listen up. Final diver. Pressure's on. Alessandro De Rose of Italy. Alessandro De Rose, the 29-year-old of Italy, just gave Joey and I more goosebumps than Gary Hunt's tens. 2017, victorious here in Pognano Amari in his home country. The first ever wild card diver to ever win a World Series. Hunt 466.30 is the score to beat as a total. He needs a 121.75 on this. To win here in Poignano. Oh, the Italian comes with style. We hear the crowd roar. A show of appreciation for Alessandro De Rose from Italy. He needed uh, a full tank of gas on that dive for a big score to overtake Gary Hunt. Has been struggling with a neck and shoulder injury. Maybe he's wincing uh, at that. So he really pushed through the pain barrier just to even dive at this particular competition. What a brave athlete. He got to the water, so the judges aren't looking at the pain. They're just looking at this dive right here, Joey. Break it down. Okay, so he's got a back triple, triple. He's got to jump up as strong as he can into the two and a half twists. And that would be very difficult with that neck and shoulder injury. So they have to be very loose and subtle with the shoulders. So I dare say that affected the takeoff. Just a slight miscalculation on the entry. But the things I love about Alessandro, he just goes for it with power, with gusto. Fine form, been working with the trampolining coaches to adjust the landing. But just a slight little error on the end. But with splitting hairs here, Alessandro De Rosa, as always, comes with his style and ability to impress the judges. Beautiful score for nine from the judges. Wonderful. He'll keep three of them. Multiply by a 4.6 with a 124. It's not going to cut it as far as earning the top of the podium box, but will get the Italian a bronze and a spot on the podium here at the final stop. What a performance. Oh, but just getting on the podium. Had a third place finish in Ireland as well. Raw emotion. Fellow Italians giving a big hug. Well deserved. Oh, you can see the emotion in his yeah. face as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What does it mean for him? Oh. That's what it means right there, Joey. One of my favorite moments was watching him win in 2017 in front of the home crowd. And 
this is right up there with it. Sad we spoke with him three days ago. He was in pain. He didn't think he was going to make it to today. And there he is on the podium. So Gary Hunt, win number four of this four straight. <laughs> and Konstantin Popovich, what a comeback from the middle of the pack. And Alessandro De Rose, who we just witnessed, the Italian in front of the home country, putting it down with a solid third place finish. Catalin Pereta in fourth. And then you have Colturi rounding out the top 12 men here at the final stop of the 2021 season. All right, you look at a great shot of Ponyano Amare and the rooftop terraces. Spectacular setting for this final stop. And sit down to the beach, David Coulter, or excuse me, David O'Queef is with Gary Hunt. Dave. Gary Hunt, you did it once again. I have to ask you, what is your number? Where are you going to stop? Um, who knows? I'll stop when I don't love it anymore. And right at the moment, I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life. Uh, training gets harder every year, but um, competing, I really feel at home up there. Amazing. And you've won more than half of the competitions you've ever entered, setting a crazy record. And then today, having three perfect dives. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of myself. I, uh, I knew that today's competition was going to be really, really uh, tough, really hot. And uh, I brought out the chili pepper budgie smugglers. And that's what the secret is. <laughs> amazing, amazing. And coming into next year, are we going to see any new dives? That's the plan, yeah. I, um, it, feel, it feels tough uh, talking about it because uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be put in before I get up there. Um, but I've got some time now and uh, yeah, it's, it's time to, to invent something new again. Amazing. And last question, you're about to receive your ninth trophy. How does this rank amongst the other massive achievements? Every year it's, it's tougher and tougher. I know my, my victories are numbered. I can't keep doing this forever. And the, the competition's tough. So uh, one more, it feels, uh, feels good to be here. You're a legend. Thank you, Gary. Thank All right. Thanks, Dave. And Gary Hunt adding a little hot sauce there, Joey, to that fourth and final round dive. 43 career victories, now 71 podiums. Absolutely stunning. Let's recap his competition here with all four rounds of diving. Uh, spicing up the competition as always, Gary Hunt, but just proving what a champion he is. Always willing to work hard, whether it's on his skill sets, whether it's on his strength and conditioning, whether it's about his mind. And check this dive out. The tens club for round two, which is the intermediate dive round. I mean, such a versatile diver, Tracy. He can perform yeah. all different kinds of dives. One of the seasons, he actually chose to do a different intermediate dive at every single competition, just to push himself. He likes to try different dives always trying to keep some variety in his diving and he believes by trying lots of different dives it makes him a greater athlete so here's his uh, front triple three and a half twist there superb entry once again round three it's all about degree of difficulty four rounds of diving added up and four great dives making this a superb competition for Gary Hunt. The triple quad, yeah. round four, smoking the entry. And just a, <laughs> just a shake, just saying, wow, how does he do it time and time again? Technically brilliant. I mean, every year, to be honest, he comes back and looks better. Always, always striving to improve. The true yeah. sign of a champion. And Joey, you, you look at his career with the littlest of things or the many things that can go wrong, whether it's weather or you don't not feeling well that day or whatever the case may be, and he's able to persevere through all of it. As also on the Rose will jump up on the podium. Well deserved result for the Italian. Catalin Peretta, I mean uh, Konstantin Popovic, excuse me, has earned his position for next year, the 2022 season, and what a comeback today. Coming from the middle of the pack. That he has. But so, Gary Hunt. Yeah, Konstantin Popovich will come back next season with a, with a bigger dive yeah. as well. And with the more DD and with the way that he's diving in terms of execution, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tight fight with Gary Hunt. Let me tell you, you watch. And let's not forget Kathleen Freder in the mix, the other remaining shark. 
yeah. as Gary Hunt calls them. Very gracious when he wins, very gracious when he doesn't. Very humble man, very intelligent. If you ever get a chance to speak to Gary Hunt on the street, he's just an absolute gentleman. Represented the UK for all of his years, but this year representing France. Now winner of four straight stops. Getting the four haul today. again gravitates to the top of the World Series. Nine King Kaakili trophies. So Gary Hunt, 800 points, Popovich and Pareta. So there are the three that will earn a spot, permanent diver spot for the 2022 season. Johnny Paredes will also take one of those spots because of an injury reserve clause. So well deserved for Jonathan Pareta, who has been on hand all day watching the guys. So there you have it. The rest of the men in the final World Series standings as we wrap up this 2021 season in Ponyano, Ponyano Amare. Getting set to award the King Kaakili Trophy. Gary Hunt and Rhiannon Ifland. So a reminder on the women's overall standings, it's Rhi winning five King Kaakili trophies. Mm -hmm. Jessica, Jessica McCauley, excuse me, and Molly Carlson, third. Let's take a look at Rianne and Ifland. What a season she's had, and this is the second straight season, second straight season that she swept Joey Zuber. So that is unheard of, and that, that streak, I mean, really started uh, back in 2018, yeah. right here at Poniano Amare. He's blown Gary's so, records out of the park with those particular ones. Yeah. There are the trophies, Rianne and Ifland. What a season. And all began in France. Sorry. Yeah, kicking off in France. I mean, beautiful diving and beautiful conditions there. Did a lot of pre-season training, working on a takeoff. And then in Mostar in Bosnia, one of the cliff diving favorites. Huge roaring crowds there in Bosnia as well. Beautiful stuff. And she's like, yeah, I've got it. And then in Ireland, very, very challenging conditions, huge waves and a lot of wind. Despite those conditions, pulling up the trump card with those 510 from the that. judges. <laughs> then in Puglia, look, this is the same location. Yeah. And then look at the contrast and conditions. Waves smashing to the cliff face. That was last Wednesday. Exactly. And then just like that, click of a finger, here we are with beautiful, flat, calm waters. Rhiannon, what a strong-minded athlete to be able to navigate through and deal with so many different elements and circumstances at so many different locations on the World Series. And to continue to win and be on top of that podium, I'll tell you what, the top of that podium has only seen her footprints <laughs> since 28, end of 2018. Superb. Amazing. Oh, great. Congratulations, Ree. Well deserved. Stayed poised, stayed focused. So Gary Hunt will now come up and accept his ninth King Ka Keeley Trophy. And, you know, Joey, one of the best quotes I've heard is, you know, the best of ability is availability. And when you look at Reed and Gary, I mean, if you're not fit, you risk injury. And if you are injury injured, it's tough to earn records and it's tough to win when you're not present. And Gary has never missed one single competition in his career. And to perform like that, that is unheard of. I mean, he's narrowly missed, almost missed a competition before. He actually turned up with chicken pox, pushed through it. He's pushed through injuries. Yeah, let's, let's take a look at his 
incredible season beginning in France, where it made him a little nervous, I would imagine, in France when Catalan mm -hmm. Beretta won the season opener. And the party has begun. Champagne ceremony. Celebrations tonight for those two and everybody in the cliff diving scene. Nine times winning the King Cock Healy Trophy, Gary would bring some glasses to protect his eyes from the champagne. <laughs> Absolutely. Can't believe that he always just stays so motivated. There you oh. have it, folks. Folks, you're witnessing the two best cliff divers of all time. Gary Hunt, Rihanna Nifflin. Another successful season in the books. A big congrats to all the talented and amazing divers on a remarkable season, none of which could happen without our crew behind the scenes. Thank you all for your hard work and passion. Great job to the athletes. On behalf of David O'Queeve and Joey Zuber, I'm Trace Worthington. We will see you next season. Thank you for watching the Red Bull Cliff Diving World Series. So long from Italy.